we are going to dis start with the diseases of the immune system systemic sclerosis systemic sclerosis scleroderma is a chronic autoimmune inflammatory disorder that is characterized by widespread vascular injury and progressive perivascular and interstitial fibrosis of multiple organs this is the classic presentation of systemic sclerosis that involves the skin of the distal extremities and presents as fibrotic and claw like tightened skins of fingers that results in um tapering and claw like deformity of fingers as we had discussed systemic sclerosis is defined as a multi system disorder that is characterized by functional and structural abnormalities of blood vessels and that results in fibrosis of skin and internal organs especially git tract and that results as a result of activation of immune system and autoimmune system activation like both humoral immunity and cell mediated immunity play their role in activation of this uh, process of fibrosis epidemiology prevalence 4 to 12 new cases are diagnosed per year per susceptibility most common age is affected age is between 35 to 65 years and females are, are affected more as compared to the male and genes like genetic background and certain hla genes that have played their role in in dam systemic in this disease systemic cases classification broadly it is classified into systemic sclerosis and localized scleroderma diffuse or systemic sclerosis is a widespread skin involvement and progression with early visceral involvement while in limited scleroderma is a limited cutaneous involvement and late visceral involvement and there is relatively a benign course this shows the diffuse cutaneous sclerosis systemic sclerosis in which there is almost involvement of whole of the body skin and internal organs in limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis there is primarily it involves the head face and he, um, head and neck area and extremities classification of systemic sclerosis limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis is presents as systemic restricted fibrosis and it affects the distal extremities and face specially and there is a delay in appearance of internal organ manifestations and it's characterized by calcinosis deposition of calcium in the skin and telangiectasias dilatation of capillaries and presents a red spots on the body and it has a good prognosis it's manifestations are summarized as crest syndrome crest c for calcinosis r for renaud's phenomena e for esophageal dysmotility s for sclerodactyly and t for telangiectasia overlap syndrome is a feature of systemic sclerosis in which at least one other autoimmune rheumatic disease is present like sle rheumatoid arthritis myositis the limited symptoms of scleroderma or limited systemic sclerosis is summarized as crest calcinosis as you can see this deposition of calcium in the skin 
Renault's phenomena, dilatation of arterioles of the skin in response to cold or stress, superficial dismutility in which there is acid reflux and decrease in motility of esophagus, sclerodactyly. This is the classical presentation, thickening and tightening of the skin on the fingers and hands that results in claw-like deformity. Telangiectasias, dilatation of capillaries, and that causes red marks on the surface of the skin. Geology, as we discussed, that certain environmental factors play their role, like, like silicata, organic solvents, urea, formaldehyde, polyvinyl chloride, leomycin, and silicon implant could be like and there is a genetic predisposition there is defective immune regulation and both cell mediated immunity and humoral immunity play their role in cell mediated immunity primarily cd4 lymphocytes activation and then cd8 cytotoxic t lymphocytes activation and certain cytokines are released and that causes further damage humoral immunity is characterized by autoantibodies production primarily anti-nuclear antibodies are positive in more than 95 percent of the cases and that hypergamma globulinemia pathogenesis of systemic sclerosis in a susceptible host which had genetic predisposition to the immune it results in a um, certain exposure of environmental agents that results in immune system activation that primarily affects the vessels and that results in endothelial cell activation and damage that causes fibroblast activation. Certain cytokines are released and fibroblast activation takes place that causes the proliferation of endothelial cells, platelet addition, and eventually interstitial and perivascular fibrosis that results in end stage obliterative vasculopathy and fibrosis an occlusion of lumina of the vessels and eventually fibrosis and this flowchart further describes the pathogenesis of systemic sclerosis Microvascular injury or vascular injury is the hallmark feature of systemic sclerosis and it's indeed the primarily event that results in further activation of platelets and abnormal immune system that results in interstitial and perivascular fibrosis and like vascular injury, vascular injury trigger it it could be like it's unknown but it certain autoimmune factor immune like abnormal immune system activation like cd4 t lymphocytes play their role and at activate the inflammatory cells and fibroblasts in appropriate humoral immunity also triggers the process of fibrosis like autoantibodies especially anti-nuclear antibodies into in the blood are released and that results in damage of the vessels and endothelial cell activation. This endothelial cell activation is result that further damage causes the platelet activation and there is defective vasculogenesis and imbalance of, of prostaglandins and thromboxin A2 that results in Mm -hmm. A further recruitment of cytokines and certain inflammatory factors like interferon gamma, briefly drive growth factor and transforming growth factors that results in collagen deposition and fibrosis around, around the vessels and interstitial, interstitium that results in narrowing of the vascular lumen. Clinically, the patient presents as Renaud's phenomena, which is an episodic arterial constriction in the extremities and 
occurs virtually in all patients and it like 70 percent of the patients preceded by this symptom telangiectasia telangiectasia are the local disruption or results from local disruption of angiogenesis and it's launched by pressure and presents with this red spots on the skin morphologically it involves primarily the vessels throughout the body and exhibit perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate with vascular lumina Collusion and edema. This is followed by progressive perivascular fibrosis and vascular hyaline thickening. Now, manifestations of these vascular changes varies with the tissue type, like in skin involvement, is characterized by diffuse sclerosis with atrophy, and that is for like initially present as edematous phase and there is doughy consistency that is for preceded by intuitive phase and then the atrophic phase there is firm thickening of the underlying dermis due to deposition of collagen tissue type 1 and there is decrease in range of that results in decrease in range of motion and typically claw like fibrotic tapered fingers loss of facial expression and inability to open the mouth fully and eventually it results in contractures focal vascular obliteration it causes ulcerations and fingertips may undergo auto obliteration this is histologic picture shows the deposition of collagen in the underlying dermis Epidermis is, as you can see in the hyper view, is unremarkable. There is slight hyperkeratosis, and within the dermis, and just beneath to the epidermis, there is loss of skin appendages, and there is slight chronic inflammatory infiltrate around the vessels, with a deposition of this collagen on in the underlying. Uh, papillary dermis and the reticular dermis and there is loss of skin appendages. Now intestinal involvement, GI tract. GIT tract causes progressive involvement causes progressive atrophy and fibrosis of the muscularis layer most prominent in the esophagus but and it presents esophagus presents as hypomotility and retrosternal pain reflux esophagitis and strictures there is mucosal thinning and ulceration and scarring throughout the GIT tract stomach presents as delayed emptying of the stomach and gut like symptoms small intestine presents as pseudo obstruction malabsorption weight loss and cachexia large intestine like presents with features of chronic constipation and fecal impaction and can result in diverticular formation morphologically there is the it um under in there is um, uh, um, that, um, that involvement of fibrosis of the muscularis propria and edema and mononuclear polyvascular infiltrate that results in interstitial and perivascular fibrosis. Lungs. Two thirds of the patients presents with affected lungs that leads to the leading cause of mortality and morbidity in later stages and morphologically they presents with interstitial fibrosis intimal thickening of pulmonary arterioles that is presents with pulmonary hypertension and the patient presents com with the complaints of dry cough and breathlessness Now this chest x-ray shows the honeycomb change that is bilateral and this is due to the result of pulmonary kidneys.
kidneys like diffuse scleroderma is as has in association with rapid progression of skin involvement is all in, involves the kidneys and the patient um, like um, 50% of the deaths are as a res result of the renal results as a result of renal failure morphologically there is intimal hyperplasia of the interlobular artery that results in intimal proliferation and deposition of mucinous or collagenous material and this results in fibrinoid necrosis of the afferent arterioles and eventually glomerulosclerosis a patient present with hypertension in 30% of the cases which have a malignant cause hypertension further exacerbates the vascular changes and results in fibrinoid necrosis with thrombosis and necrosis a patient presents with abnormal sediment azotemia proteinuria hemolytic microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and eventually renal ha 10% of the patients presents with um involvement of heart with restrictive cardiomyopathy pericarditis and then and heart failure arrhythmias myocardial fibrosis morphologically there is perivascular infiltrate with interstitial fibrosis that results in restrictive cardiomyopathy laboratory findings laboratory in the shows the certain auto antibodies like anti nuclear anti antibodies in more than 90% of the patients and rheumatoid factor anti scl70 against dna topo isomerase antibodies are present in 40% 20 to 40% in diffuse scleroderma and anti centromere antibodies like present in 90% of cases in limited trauma treatment is a wide spectrum of clinical manifestations and depends on severity of the disease and spontaneous improvement occurs frequently disease modifying interventions can take it can be adopted like certain medications penicillamine methotrexate in immunosuppressive patients and symptomatic A prognosis is quite variable and difficult to progress predict five year prognosis of diffuse scleroderma is 70% and in limited scleroderma is 90% the major cause of death is renal involvement renal failure cardiac involvement heart attack arrhythmias and pulmonary involvement as pulmonary fibrosis results in hypertension and then further more autoimmune diseases which lies local autoimmune diseases are hashimoto's thyroiditis in which auto antibodies are formed against anti thyroglobulin anti microsome and these auto antibodies results in the patient presents with hyper hypothyroidism autoimmune hemolytic anemia in which auto antibodies are against rbc's autoimmune arthritis against germ cell auto antibodies are formed with basel syndrome auto antibodies are formed against anti glomerular basement membrane autoimmune thrombocytopenia in which auto antibodies are formed against platelets pernicious anemia in which there is antibodies against increasing factor and parietal cells insulin dependent diabetes mellitus in which antibodies are against islet cells of pancreas myasthenia gravis antibodies are against neuromuscular junction graves disease antibodies are against thyroid thyroid stimulating hormone receptors and that results in um graves disease and patient presents with hyperthyroidism so hype in thyroid hyper and hypothyroidism both are the manifestations of autoimmune diseases